we followed for a long time. We played against Mike uh, a couple times in Miami in some exciting games, and I think he fits exactly what we're, we're doing on offense, gives you the ability to stretch the field, get a lot of explosive plays. He'll have tremendous chemistry with Joe and fit in really well with the rest of our offense and our tight end room and where we want to go with this thing. So um, really exciting day to be able to get Mike in the building and make him a part of what we're doing here in Cincinnati. And so I'm going to turn it over to you guys and let you guys fire away with questions, and I'll, I'll step away from Mike here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, free agency is always an interesting process, uh, for sure. Uh, this was my second time kind of experiencing it. And, um, you know, I kind of, I knew that this was a place I wanted to be. Uh, and luckily, uh, it was reciprocated. And uh, they, because it's definitely a two-way street. And um, so when they, when they had reached out, uh, I was very excited. Um, you know, I know the... The, the you know the talent that's in the locker room and you know the coaching staff and I've known uh, I know a couple people that have been here before that have you know had nothing but unbelievable things to say about it um, so super super excited who's, who's here? so one of my best friends uh, was here uh, Nick Bowers he was uh, he was a tight end on the practice squad here for for a little bit and uh, he I mean he loved it so much uh, and then uh, I played with Ted Karras. Uh, he was in Miami with me and um, had talked to him about it. And then, <clears throat> I mean, outside of all that, they could have said that it was, you know, the worst place in the world. But when you got, you know, number nine at quarterback, I was like, I, that is the place I want to go. So uh, that was something I was really looking forward to. Have you heard from Joe? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Joe reached out on whatever day it was on Tuesday or whenever it was that I agreed. Uh, and I mean, just for you know him to reach out and, you know, just say that, um, you know, he was excited that it, you know, finally was, you know, official and all that kind of stuff and, you know, excited to, you know, get to work and build some chemistry. So, uh, you know, I appreciated that. And um, I am, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so uh, something that, you know, there's not many, if, if any, guy that uh can do what he does with a with a football so uh definitely going to be a great opportunity for not only myself but you know everybody in that locker room do you see yourself more as a tight end or a slot receiver um definitely you know have the ability to do both um i think that that is what presents you know my mismatches um i have had success being a slot in 12 personnel stuff with two tight ends on the field. Um, but I've also, you know, had success in, you know, you know one tight end uh, personnel groupings and going out there and making plays. So um, obviously, I mean, it's, you know, March 14th. So, you know, nothing is going to be, you know, final today. And there's going to be no plays made today. And there's a lot of things that need to be earned. Um, but uh, I am, you know, I'm very motivated and, you know, extremely, uh, extremely grateful for the opportunity to, you know, be here in, in an offense that I feel like, um, you know, I can come in and just not that, not that it needs much help, but um, I can, you know, come in and, you know, make some plays. What's the biggest strength you bring to the table, do you think? Um, I think the thing that I, um, you know, pride myself on is just being dependable, um, you know, being reliable. And, you know, my favorite thing in the world is making a contested catch. Uh, you know, when the ball's in the air, like, I, I consider it mine. Uh, so um, it's something that, you know, I put a lot, a lot of time into. Uh, all different types of, um, you know, hand-eye coordination and, you know, catching the football is something that I take a lot of pride in. Uh, and it's gotten me to, you know, seven years now in the National Football League. So, uh whether it's, you know, run the good route to get open and, you know, create separation or whether, you know, guys on you got to go up and make a play or whether it's two hands, one hand, you know, whatever it is, you got to go out and uh, make a play. And um, so I'm never going to be uh, I'm never going to be angry when I see the ball come my way. I tell you that much. I'm, I'm always uh, always looking for that. Mike, you talked about Joe Burrow and his impact. How much of a draw is it to come to a place where you feel like you have a chance right away to be on a team that's a contender and win a championship? Yeah, it's something that 
I haven't, I've never been a part of before. So it's, it's, it's very exciting. Um, it's, uh, but like, that's, that, that's what you get when you got, you know, one of those guys under center. So, uh, it's, it's really, really exciting. Um, and I mean, obviously, you know, his resume speaks for itself and, uh, the talent, you know, on the outside with, with Jamar and T, and um, there's just there's there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that that are capable of making plays, and a, guy, a lot of guys that have made a lot of plays in this league uh, on that offense. So, uh, like I said, man, it's still you know it's March 14th and it's early and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for me personally, you know, my excitement levels are really high. Has Jamar reached out about Grady last week? Uh, I'm sure you guys saw it publicly on on uh, on social media, which I was I was grateful for because obviously you guys know it could definitely use some work. Um, but uh, I mean that that's that is that is me as a player like to a T like uh, go out make plays and have fun like that's that's who I am it's what I pride myself on. Um, been through too much and you know work way too hard to not go out there and 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 have fun. Now does that mean that you know? It can't get better. Yeah, it can definitely get better. Uh, but I think that's kind of what makes it good is the fact that it's so bad. So, yeah. Would you say that your gritty has been developed over the months? No. No, unfortunately not for everybody listening. It, it sure has not. Um, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, grittying last year in uh, New England. Um, just based off of, I, you know, I only got in the end zone twice and uh, felt like only one of them was, you know, worthy of it. You know, I, for me, you know, I can't, I can't do it every time. You got to do it, you know, big moments and, you know, exciting, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, so only, only one time last year. So I, have, I haven't had a lot of practice at it recently. So uh, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be fun to bring that back out. You mentioned the contested catches, obviously, all those can come in the red zone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's it's something that I that I pride myself on, you know. In, in the red zone, it's all about you know making um, you know really good throws in, in tight windows, which you know check the box here, and uh, then on the other side, uh, you know you got to go out and make contested catches because you know the the field's condensed, um, you know, and it's it's a lot of tight windows, and so you got to go out there and make make tough make tough plays and make tough catches, and it's something that you know I've been. I've been able to do for you know the last six years of my career, so uh, you know looking forward to keep that keep that rolling. Zach said that, that you've been on their radar for a long time. I mean, when did, when, how, what kind of interactions did you have with them previously, in previous years? Before? Um, yeah, I mean, maybe you know a little bit last year, um, but no, you know, conversation or anything like that. But just you know through agent and you know hearing that you know maybe it's a potential, but. Um, and now to you know, you know now to be here, uh, it's something that I'm really excited about. Uh, just you know, I've heard a lot of great things, and you know, today was you know first time I've met Zach, and um, you know, called me yesterday when it was officially the new league year or whatever, and you know they can call and um, um, you know, coach Coach Casey James James Casey called me. I mean, I think it was like four o'clock and like two seconds my phone's ringing and you know my phone and so it but it's it's cool because like you, you know you know you know what, what what kind of people you're you're surrounding yourself with and you know these coaches are uh from what i've heard and now from what i've you know experienced today just getting to know them a little bit everybody's awesome and uh it's 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 an awesome uh, place to be and i'm you know extremely grateful for the opportunity you mentioned james casey he played in the league himself yeah yeah, uh, I mean, just talking to him throughout the course of the day, I mean, he seems like, you know, such an incredible coach, a great guy. Um, and the thing that I'm most excited about is, you know, just kind of, you know, fine tuning, you know, the, the minor details of my game and, and the little things that, you um, that he seems, you know, so, um, you know, locked in on. So that's something that I'm really excited about. Um, and I'm looking forward to, you know, taking all and any coaching um, to improve in all aspects of my game. Uh, 
And, you know, that, that includes, you know, run blocking, pass blocking, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because the more you can do, the, the, the more you'll be out there. And the more you're out there, the more plays you'll make. So um, that's what I'm looking forward to. How would you describe yourself as a blocker? It's not what people think about when right. you, but how do you view yourself in that way? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not naive enough to, you know, I, I know the perception of me as, as, a, as a player is, you know, he doesn't want to block, he just wants to go out there and catch the ball. And uh, I absolutely want to go out there and catch the ball. And I think that that's obvious. Um, but what's not so obvious is, you know, I, I want to go out there and I want to make, I want to make an impact in the run game. Um, you know, I want to, you know, do whatever it takes to, you know, take my game to the next level and, you know, help take this offense to another level. Um, and whether that's, you know, going in there and, you know, blocking a defensive end or whether it's going in there and, you know, blocking the DB off the edge or, you know, going to the second level and, you know, blocking the linebacker, whatever it is, um, it's something that I'm excited about because, uh, I, like, like I said, I know the perception of me as a player, and that's that's fine. I mean, what, what you put on tape is what you are, but there hasn't been – I haven't had a lot of reps at it. Uh, I would say when I was in Miami, I played receiver. Like, it, it is what it is. I mean, you put on the tape, like, I played receiver. Uh, we had a lot of injuries at receiver, and I went out there and played receiver and did it well, but – uh, you know, you're not, you're not blocking a lot of defensive ends when you're lined up outside the numbers. So, uh, and then when I got to New England, I wasn't really asked to do it either. Um, but it's something that I would like, I would like to do. It's something that, that I'm looking forward to. It's something that, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, buckle my chin strap and get ready to roll. You've been an East Coast guy. What was the family's immediate reaction to Cincinnati? Yeah. Um, well, it's still uh, we're still on you know the Eastern time zone, so that's so that that still counts. Um, and I mean, I flew in this morning from Newark, an hour and a half flight. So um, yeah, my wife was super excited. Um, I mean, she she knew since you know the the day the season ended. I I've been talking about Cincinnati, and just because I knew you know the opportunity that it presents. Um, and I mean, there's not many opportunities out there with the type of offense, with the type of quarterback play that this place presents. So, uh, I mean, the, the second it happened, the second that they called, I was like, I was like, Hallie, like we might be going to Cincinnati. And she was, you know, just as excited as me because she knows how important it is to me. Um, so, uh, it was, you know, super cool, and I'm I'm fired up, and I'm t uh, like I said, I, this has been on my radar for a while. Why why is that been you know something you talked about? I know you kind of just referenced it a little bit, but I mean, why specifically this team was it just that you know that Titans have done pretty well here moving forward? I mean, is there something specifically that made that on your radar soon? Season now? Yeah, I mean the obviously you know I've never played for a in. You know, like I said, it's March 14th. I'm not, you know, going crazy right now or anything like that. I'm just, you know, in my mind, my thought process, like I've never played on a, you know, a championship contending football team uh, for one. So that was, you know, first and foremost. And then at this stage of my career, I mean, I would love to continue to play. I mean, I, w I hope I'm not even at the halfway point of my career. You know, I've played six years. I'd love to, you know, keep it going. I feel incredible. Um, and so I know at this point in my career where, you know, I had a lot of success early and haven't really had the opportunity to continue that success the last, you know, year or two or so. Um, and so I know that, you know, this is, you know, a, a big year for myself and I've attacked it as such. And uh, I know that, you know, this place um, has had, you know, tight ends produce uh, and it was just an right right there at the front of my mind where i mean great offense great coaches unbelievable quarterback i mean you know what else could you want as as a guy that you know wants to go out there and make plays miami and new england are very different yeah they yeah they are from the weather to the organization to everything about uh, about both both experiences what what big thing do you think you drew from each one I mean, what you learn you always learn something in every experience what do you think you learned? yeah absolutely um I would say in Miami, um, learned how to deal with a lot of change um, and you know interchangeable parts. Uh, I played with I played for three different head coaches in five years in Miami. I got drafted there in 2018. Played for Adam Gase, 
then played three years for Brian Flores. Had a you know a great three year stretch with 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 Flo, and he was awesome to play for. And then played a year for Mike McDaniel, and then left there and you know played for Bill Belichick in New England. I mean, so there's been I've dealt with a lot of change um, specifically over those five years in Miami, where you know you just kind of you got to understand how to you know change what you do and adapt and make plays no matter what the situation is i mean i played with so many different quarterbacks in miami going from my rookie year to ryan Tannehill to ryan fitzpatrick who's also a cincinnati Bengal legend um and then to you know brock osweiler josh rosen to uh um, you know, Jacoby Brissett, Teddy Bridgewater, Skylar Thompson, like so many, like so many different guys that I've played with throughout my career in Miami where it's just like, you know, kind of learn the nobody cares. Like you just got to go out and make plays. Like nobody's like, oh, well, he's played with a lot of quarterbacks, played for a lot of head coaches. He's had a new coordinator. Like that's not what it's about. You got to go out there and produce no matter what the situation is. Um, and, you know, met a ton of unbelievable people in Miami and will, you know, never, you know, take that. Uh, situation for granted and you know I got friends for life from there forever um, and then went to New England for one year and had an opportunity to play for um, you know coach Belichick who obviously you know his resume speaks for itself and you know learned a lot from him and um, just kind of had to you know go about um, this league and you know learned a lot about situational football learned a lot about um, you know the ins and outs of the the game and just little little things like that where, you know, did we have a lot of success this past year? No, absolutely not. But um, still was able to take um, a lot of knowledge of football with me. You played in a pretty, played well in a pretty notable Bengals-Dolphins game back in 2019, <laughs> uh, the overtime game. The Joe Burrow Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back at that time period, and yeah. where, really where both franchises were at that time, mm -hmm. look to now and how this franchise has developed since then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I mean, that, that game specifically, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, got both those franchises where they are now. And uh, it, it is, it's definitely crazy, you know, looking back on it. Um, and now, you know, I'm here and have the opportunity to, you know, play with Joe. And um, so it's, it's definitely uh, something that, that I'm grateful for. And it's, it's been, uh, it's been a, an interesting ride to say the least. Uh, Especially, you know, the last two years have been, uh, it's been a journey that I wouldn't change. Um, but it's definitely been, you know, something that has kind of, you know, made me uh, a little bit, you know, more mentally tough and, you know, kind of dealt with a lot of, uh, you know, adversity uh, the last couple of years. So, um, but going back from that moment to now, it's crazy to kind of see how it all transpires. Um, but happy to be here. What do you remember about the Barrow Bowl? Is there anything yeah, a couple things. Uh, one, I scored two touchdowns. Uh, I remember that. Um, and then two, I remember us being up by a lot. And then out of nowhere, Tyler Eifert catches a jump ball. And then Andy Dalton runs on a two-point conversion. And now before we know it, we send, you know, our onside kick team out there or our, our hands team out there. And my buddy was on the front line. I still make fun of him to this day. He was on the front line, Durham Smythe, tight end of Miami. He, like, stepped up for the ball. Then he leaned back, and the ball went over his head. And then the Bengals, now we, recovered it. And, I mean, it was just absolute. I mean, for, for a game between two teams that – their records weren't great at the time. I mean, it was it, the game was electric. I mean, you know, um, went into overtime and then obviously you know won on a last second field goal. But uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun that game. Is it surreal to think that like you call that the Burrow Bowl, like in your words, and now you're going to be playing with Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you guys will probably get to know it over the course of the next you know year or so that. I like to have a lot of fun, and I'm just always joking around. So, and you know, immediately when I thought of that, I was like, "Yeah, Burrow Bowl." Um, but yeah, I mean, going into that game, I mean, you, you know, as players, you know, you want to win the game and you want to go out there and play well and all that kind of stuff. But like, we knew what was at stake for you know the franchises and all that kind of stuff. 